Hey everybody, I'm Tim and this is your guide to Cigar Wrap Reliefs. You're watching Cigars Daily. Get more out of all our videos when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you'll find extra content, coupon codes, and for this video, I am puffing on AJ Fernandez New World Dorado, the newest of the New World line, part of my wrap relief lineup today, which I gotta tell you up front, it is damn hard to find a cigar maker that makes like every wrap relief out there. It seems like a lot of cigar makers specialize in some type of wrappers and not others, but really we're gonna break all that down in this video. By the end of it, should have a better idea why. If you're just diving into this cigar thing, you've got to learn a ton about it. It's pretty surprising how something so simple, just rolled up leaves, you cut one end, you light the other, and you simply enjoy. It also happens to be incredibly complicated if you're trying to learn about this and like dive all the way in. And so today I want to demystify one of the most important parts of the cigar world, and that is the wrap relief on the outside of the cigar. As you spend time around cigar people, you'll realize pretty damn quick that we characterize cigars by the wrapper leaf on the outside. Now, cigars come with more than one leaf. That's why we call it the wrapper because it wraps around the outside. Outside of that, you've got two other parts of the cigar. There's a binder leaf underneath, which binds all of the filler leaves in the middle together. Three simple parts. Again, a pretty damn simple hobby with some weird complications. And when it comes to this wrap relief, it's actually a really critical, essential part of the cigar. You know, before I ever got into the cigar industry and I rolled cigars for myself, which by the way, I was terrible at, I heard a guy talk about the wrap relief and he said that the wrap relief is like a dress on a woman, which is a bunch of BS. Like I've heard this guy was like supposedly some famous roller and I think that it's an analogy that falls way short because the wrap relief on your cigar is like way more than the dress on a beautiful woman. The truth is the wrap relief in a lot of cigars gives that cigar the character of his flavor. But also that's not on every cigar out there. With some cigars that flavor comes from the binder or even the filler leaves inside. At the same time, the wrap relief is incredibly important for presentation. It's the leaf that you see, and it's important to blend a cigar with the correct wrap relief that matches binder and filler for combustion rate. If a blender doesn't know what they're doing with a wrap relief, then they'll put a leaf on that burns too fast or too slow, and the cigars will never burn right no matter how well they're rolled. And so we're going to take a look inside this world of wrap reliefs right now to help you sort of get a framework for exactly what type of wrap reliefs are available and which one even might please your palate the most. And so I'm going to take you through some and all the cigars I'm doing in this video are from AJ Fernandez cigars because by golly, if you're going to do a video on wrap reliefs, you're going to want to pick one of the most prolific cigar makers of all time. And certainly AJ is that guy. I think he's like each, like he's got factories that roll like 130 or 160,000 cigars a day. Almost nobody makes as many cigars as AJ Fernandez and with as many different wrap reliefs on them. So I'm going to show you some different AJ cigars today, which wrap relief comes on which one and exactly what each has to offer. Kicking it off with the first wrap relief, which is also coincidentally probably the first wrap relief that you tried when you got into premium cigars. Chances have it, you lit up a Connecticut shade. This cigar right here is the AJ Fernandez New World Connecticut. And again, Connecticut just refers to this wrap relief on the outside. The binder and filler leaves of any cigar might come from a different like growing region of a country or even a different country altogether. But the Connecticut here just refers to this very light colored wrapper leaf here. Now you'll know a Connecticut wrapper when you see one almost every single time because they're like the most lightest colored wrapper leaf that comes on a cigar, basically the color of coffee with cream in it. And this is where I'm going to get myself into a lot of trouble with the cigar aficionados and the nerds out there. People talk about this idea of wrapper leaf color and shade, like as if the lighter colored wrappers are always the mildest ones and the darker colored wrappers are like the stronger ones. And that's not entirely true. There are some very dark cigars that are actually pretty mild and even some lighter Connecticut's that are pretty bold. 
But I gotta say, and this is what'll get me in trouble, those are majorly outliers. Like there's not a ton of them out there to the degree that I'll tell you, in a very general sense, you can know that if a cigar has a light colored wrapper like this Connecticut here, it's gonna be a milder cigar like nine times out of 10. It's like over, so overwhelmingly the case that you can basically count on it. At the same time, in order to get a leaf of this color, they grow these under the shade. That's why they call it Connecticut shade. In the truest traditional sense of the word, Connecticut shade means that it was grown in the United States. But the way people use the term today just means Connecticut shade. They literally plant the crop, whether it's in the US or Ecuador, typically with a lot of Connecticut's, and then they'll put cheesecloth over the entire crop so that it grows in the shade. In countries like Ecuador, where there's a lot of natural cloud cover, at times they'll grow these, I think, even without the cheesecloth, which is pretty impressive. But what you usually get with a Connecticut shade wrapper is a cigar that's milder and it's a lot of cigar aficionados put it out there, has got subtler, smoother flavors. For a lot of people who are getting into cigars, the Connecticut shade is exactly the way to start off. And so if you're looking for a good jumping in point, you can walk into any brick and mortar shop in the United States and say, I'd love to start off with a Connecticut cigar. They'll know exactly what you're talking about and probably even be able to guess that it's one of your first ones. Now, if you've been smoking cigars for a little while, it's very likely that you have already tried some Connecticut cigars. And then once you do that, you find yourself in the position that so many cigar smokers end up in where you're like, by God, I'd like to try something else because it seems like there's so much out there and there is, there are so many different types of wrappers out there. And if you're looking to expand your horizons and broaden your palate, you might think about a step up from there in terms of strength and character with what a lot of people like, and that is a Cameroon wrapper. This is a very interesting wrap relief in that these originated in Cameroon, Africa. They're a major outlier from a lot of what you see, like 99% of cigars today come from Latin America. That's the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, even Cuba. It's like this really nice temperate area, but in Cameroon, Africa, they figured out something, some kind of secret sauce, because this is a very unique type of wrap relief. It's known for being typically very very toothy. And toothy just means that they come with these little goosebumps all over that are a good sign that there's going to be great flavor in that cigar. Those little goosebumps are little pockets of oils that are responsible for the flavor in a cigar. At the same time today though, you don't always get African Cameroon and this is something to be aware of. Typically if a Cameroon wrapper is grown in Africa, it'll say African Cameroon. But like a lot of leaves out there, you find that that Cameroon seed from Africa was taken and transplanted, maybe to Ecuador or Honduras. And then what you end up with is a Honduran Cameroon or an Ecuadorian Cameroon or some other like version of the Cameroon wrapper. Over time, this will change the leaf and give you a completely different taste, a completely different flavor profile, but still living in the wheelhouse of what Cameroons have to offer. This is typically a more mild to medium strength cigar when you see a Cameroon wrapper, and they're earthier but have explosive flavor. Some of the most famous cigars of all time have Cameroon leaves on the outside. It's one that a lot of people look for very intentionally when they're looking for something a little extra. So if you're looking to expand your horizon and get out of the Connecticut world, Cameroon just might be the next stop on your journey. And then there's a leaf that I have come to absolutely adore, and it is one of the most popular, most common leaves today, and that is the traditional Habano. This right here is the A.J. Fernandez New World Dorado, because it uses leaf that comes from A.J.'s Dorado fields, which grow this beautiful golden leaf. And that's literally the reference to Dorado right there in itself. But the wrapper leaf on the outside here is a good old traditional Nicaraguan Habano. Now, the phrase Habano itself really just refers to a seed that was originally grown in Cuba. And today you get Habanos from all other regions of the cigar growing world, just like you might with the African Cameroon, right? Like a Habano seed might have been grown in Cuba at one time, but then for the last maybe 10 years or so has been grown in Nicaragua. That would make it a Nicaraguan Habano, meaning that the original root of that seed is Cuban, but today it's really more Nicaraguan than Cuban. It'd be like if you grew up in Nicaragua, but your great-great-grandparents were from Cuba. 
At the same time, you see so much Habano leaf today. To me, it's one of the most popular and common wrappers to see in the cigar industry. And one of the reasons for that is that it's an unbelievably versatile leaf. You can do a lot with Habano. You can take the stuff and make a very nice medium cigar with beautiful notes of like cedar and almonds, nice earthy notes, or you can make a Habano leaf quite a bit darker and give it even a little bit more strength. There's lots of things to do with a blend like this. And because of that, you won't have any problem finding a good Habano cigar out there like most cigar makers today are rolling with Habano wrapper leaf. And so if you really want to take your palate down a very interesting journey, you can even just try different Habanos from different cigar makers out there. And you'll find some incredible diversity of flavor, all stemming from just one popular type of wrapper. And now for another one that I'm sure will get me in trouble with the cigar snobs out there, but I got to just level with you. The wrapper leaf called Maduro which is not a technical name for a wrapper leaf. These days, it really just refers to a style of cigar, and I'll explain a little bit. The word Maduro pretty much literally means ripe. It's a wrapper leaf that is just ripe and ready, typically darker and bolder and stronger, but as we use these terms in the cigar world, they sort of change. The use of them becomes more colloquial, and today, the word Maduro means less ripe or a specific kind of wrapper, and it really just is used to refer to cigars that are darker. Like if I hold up that Connecticut New World here, you'll see it's a very light-colored cigar next to this Maduro San Latano Requiem from AJ Fernandez. This thing right here has got a nice, ripe, dark Maduro wrapper, but it also lives in that category where you'll find a lot of other very dark cigars that everybody just says, oh yeah, I'm more into Maduros these days. And truly, it references a bunch of different types of wrapper leaves out there. You find a lot of boxes that'll say Maduro on them, but even other categories sort of fit into the Maduro world right now. Like certain wrappers that might say Oscuro on them, or even the broadleaf Mexican San Andreas or Dark Sumatras might be referred to as a Maduro today. And while in the general sense, Maduros are stronger, bolder cigars, it's not all the time. It's just most of the time. Reliably enough that if you're like, yeah, I want a Maduro, you're probably looking for something bolder and stronger. Very More often than not, these are the cigars that come with spice on the back of the throat or black pepper on the retrohale or some powerfully pungent note. And also the place where you're most likely to find flavor notes like chocolate, leather, and coffee. So if you're growing in cigars and you're looking for new ways to spread out, I would say this, don't be afraid of a Maduro wrapper. Try one. In fact, try a few from a few different cigar makers. They'll be very different from blender to blender. Like the AJ Fernandez San Latano Requiem Maduro will be a very different Maduro than like some of the Maduros put out by Eric Espinosa, whose cigars tend to be a lot spicier. Like even within the world of just dark cigars, there's a, still a ton of variety. So don't let one Maduro sum it up for all of them. Try a few, see if there's one that ignites your palate. Now, I've already mentioned that the word Maduro sort of categorizes a few different types of wrapper leaves, but there's one I really want to touch on in this video, and that is the Connecticut Broadleaf. This right here is the A.J. Fernandez Enclave Broadleaf. This, to me, is one of the most special wrapper leaves out there because it really has only come into popularity within the last 20 years. While cigars have a history that spans hundreds of years, the broadleaf wrapper was typically not suited to be a wrapper of a fine, handmade premium cigar. It was something that they used in second-rate cigars, uglier cigars, or cheroots or something like that, and that has partly to do with the nature of this leaf itself. You see, when they grow broadleaf in the field, the broadleaf plants don't really grow as high as the other varietals of black air-cured tobacco, the stuff we make for cigar. Black air-cured tobacco, the stuff we use to make cigars. The plants are like half as tall. They have this really thick, leathery leaf on them that can be sort of hard to work with. Even when they cure the leaves, they often do it different with Connecticut broadleaf in that this is typically done as a stock cut leaf. Unlike other leaves out there where they'll pluck each leaf off the stalk of the tobacco plant and then hang them in a curing barn to turn them from green to brown, broadleaf gets its own special treatment. 
They take the whole plant and they lop it off right at the bottom of the stock and they hang the whole stock upside down in the curing barn. This allows the extra nutrients and everything from the stock to run down into that leaf and give it extra character. The signs of a really good broadleaf are a really nice natural sweetness that's accompanied almost always by incredible strength. What amazes me about Broadleaf is not just the fact that it used to not be acceptable for rappers and now it is, it's the fact that within the world of Broadleaf, there's still this massive ocean of different flavors and profiles and notes that you can get out of just blends that use this type of leaf on the outside. And so, personally, when I got into cigars, I was a big Connecticut guy. In fact, for like 15 years of being in cigars. I just like mild, smooth, creamy Connecticut. It's only been in the last few years that I found myself lighting up stuff like this. Bold, powerful broadleaf, even early in the morning because I'm looking for something that'll just punch me in the face a little more with some strength and flavor. And so this may not be your bag just yet. You might light up a couple of broadleafs and say, you know what? It's not for me. But that also doesn't mean that it won't eventually be for you. Because as you continue smoking, your palate will grow and change. And you'll find that as you look for new stuff, your palate will expand and you'll appreciate more than you did when you first got into cigars. That's certainly been the way it has been for me. And just know this, one way or another, eventually, you're going to find yourself looking for a broadleaf. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's really hard to find one cigar maker that makes every different type of wrapper leaf out there. Like, there's a few I really want to cover and I'm probably going to make another video in supplement to this one. I still got to cover Sumatra and Corojo and a number of different types of leaves out there that I light up all the time and absolutely fall in love with. For the love of God, I don't even have a Mexican San Andreas in this video. So, plenty more to talk about, guys, but I'll ask you here. What do you look for in a wrapper leaf on a cigar? Drop a comment down below and let everybody know because we'll all learn better when we learn together, especially if you're just getting into this and you're trying to like unravel the mystery of cigars. This is one thing that if you can get a basic understanding of it, it'll put you like leaps and bounds ahead of other new cigar smokers. So check the comments down below this video for more recommendations. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching here. Do check this video out on CigarsDailyPlus.com. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily, and I will see you in the comments.